Hello, Atlanta. Welcome to Love It or Leave It, the Errors Tour. Here in the city where Diet Coke was invented. It's a spiritual space for me. Let's get into it. What a week. As a thank you to his donors for taking his support base to the next level, presidential candidate and guy with a voice we're not allowed to make fun of, RFK Jr., posted a video of himself doing a backflip into a lake. You don't have to keep watching it. <laughs> Sick flip babe sighed an emotionally exhausted, teary-eyed Cheryl Hines holding the camera, trying to remember what their couples therapist said. <laughs> Kennedys, of course, have a long history of flipping into lakes. <laughs> Hopefully, this campaign ends about as well. I want to talk about the, that jump into the water for just one second, which is a lot of people have been making fun of it for saying like, oh, you know, that's not a good jump. And then some people are like, no, he's, an, he's older. That's pretty good. People are missing the fact that he jumps into a lake like he's been wealthy from the day he was born. <laughs> he jumps into a lake like a man who summers. You know what I mean? Like, that's a person that's been jumping into beautiful, pristine East Coast waters for weeks on end his whole life. <laughs> Fucking bullshit. <laughs> Kennedy appears to be getting ready to announce that he's switching his party affiliation with a super PAC now pulling his support as an independent. Yeah, that's right, you little bitch. This nomination is almost mine, said Marianne Williamson. <laughs> as her campaign manager, a raven, pecked at the hair scrunchie of her last volunteer. <laughs> of course, RFK Jr.'s entire operation was already right-wing from his anti-vax conspiracy theories to the GOP and Trump donors who raised $2.2 million for him at a fundraiser this month. A Kennedy hasn't put his own narrow interests ahead of others this hard since Ted caught his breath for 15 minutes on the bank of that pond. <laughs> That was a tough one to say, honestly. <laughs> okay. Trump's civil fraud trial in New York commenced this week, though the judge's prior ruling means the focus is entirely on the penalty Trump will face. Not pleased, Trump has spent the week attacking the judge and New York Attorney General and friend of the show, Tish James, calling Judge Arthur Engeron, I don't know how to say it. I don't even think he does. Calling Judge Arthur Engeron unfair and unhinged and James corrupt and racist. Trump also accused the judge of undervaluing Mar-a-Lago, saying it's worth not $18 million, but 50 to 100 times that amount. My God, how much does he have hidden in Ivana's casket? <laughs> he... Just a question. <laughs> On Monday, ahead of Trump's ar arrival in court, Tish from Brooklyn spoke to the press. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how much money you think you may have, no one is above the law. Come on. No matter how much money you think you may have, delusional fake-ass wannabes are not above the law. Outside the courtroom, Trump called James a terrible person who was out to get him because he was doing well in the polls and said the judge should be disbarred. This is, of course, a legal strategy known as negging, and it's Trump's best chance for getting the judge to have sex with him. <laughs> Trump complained about not getting a jury trial, but that only happened because Trump's lawyer failed to check a box on a routine form that would have requested one, Though in fairness to that lawyer, she's only his lawyer because she was kidnapped while leaving a bar, which Trump thought was the bar. <laughs> anyway, he, 
He may not have a jury, but he does have the next best thing, a judge who he's repeatedly called an unhinged piece of shit. <laughs> On Tuesday, that very judge placed a gag order on Trump after he attacked the judge's law clerk by name and posted a picture of her with Senator Chuck Schumer and called her Schumer's girlfriend. Serves him right making fun of people's girlfriends. Imagine if somebody started attacking you, said Tim Scott in an empty room. <laughs> It's refreshing to see somebody defending their staff in that way. Isn't that right, Brian, you spindly dope? <laughs> wow, they're on your side. They're on your side. All the way. Producer Brian, everybody. We also considered lanky simpleton and our old standby, ugly idiot. <laughs> Well, he's the point. If he was any of those things, we couldn't use the joke. <laughs> not, not now that they've unionized. <laughs> Maybe before I could have gotten away with it, but not anymore. <laughs> A new Supreme Court term kicked off on Monday during which the justices will hear cases on gun restrictions for domestic abusers, the power of federal agencies, and the intersection of free speech and social media. If you want to have a say in the decisions, remember that only Patreon Platinum members have access to Clarence Thomas's Discord. <laughs> Said Clarence Thomas as the justices took their seats, did everybody have a good summer vacation? Mine was normal. By the way, there's some rhino meat in the break room fridge for everyone. I got it at Walsmart or whatever. <laughs> California Senator Dianne Feinstein died last week at age 90. Please do not be afraid, said her replacement, Senator Dianne Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Hey, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing we could do now. I've said it. <laughs> Jokes aside, she leaves behind a storied legacy and past doing what she loves most. Free soloing El Capitan. <laughs> These are tough. These are tough. These are tough. <laughs> Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced we lost a giant in the Senate. I'm still here, asshole. I was just changing clothes, cried John Fetterman. <laughs> Look, we've made a few fine sign jokes here at Love It or Leave It, so I want to be earnest for a second. Dianne Feinstein did a lot, of, a lot for San Francisco, California, and the country, and it's a lesson for all of us, Bob Iger, and whoever is thinking about Barbie too, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> We're all worried about Barbie too, aren't we? <laughs> New York Congressman and Harry Potter author George Santos chose, <laughs> chose Feinstein's passing as the moment to hard launch his husband on social media, tweeting, my husband Matt and I are heartbroken by the news of the passing of Senator Feinstein. When reached for comment, Senator Feinstein bolted upright in her confidence at his what now? <laughs> Matt didn't see the tweet as he has obviously never seen any news in his entire life. California Governor Gavin Newsom, who said last month he wouldn't appoint any of the candidates running for Feinstein's seat, selected LaFonza Butler, the president of Emily's List, to fill the job. <laughs> Butler will become the first out black lesbian to serve in Congress since George Santos. <laughs> I have to say, this has to be one of the wildest weeks of news. It was only on Saturday, since our last show, that we narrowly avoided a government shutdown. In fact, President Biden signed a government funding bill just before midnight, which was perfect because he was already up to go to the bathroom. But <laughs> And then it happened, McCarthageddon. Chaos is 
Speaker McCarthy. You know, this is personal with Matt. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. Don't judge the GOP by Matt Gates. I think Kevin McCarthy should take a hint. I think Matt has planned this all along. You saw Kevin McCarthy lying like a dead dog. Bring it on, let's get this over. Nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Nobody likes uh, Matt Gates. Kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> The opposite of love isn't hate, it is indifference. Can't you see you love each other? <laughs> For anyone who hasn't been following this news cycle closely, we prepared a faithful reenactment. Brian, bring out the bucket of angry crabs. <laughs> there's, no, there's no bucket. <laughs> after, the, after the shutdown had been averted, Speaker McCarthy told reporters on Saturday. You know what, if somebody wants to remove because I want to be the adult in the room, go ahead and try. If people think I'm too handsome, that... <laughs> anyway, the point he was making is, you come at the king, you better not... They got him. <laughs> the king has been gotten, never mind. Poor Kevin. Hindsight really is 2020. Hindsight, of course, being the medical disorder Marjorie Taylor Greene refuses to vaccinate her children for. Okay. Gates had this to say on the House floor Monday. It is going to be difficult for my Republican friends to keep calling President Biden feeble while he continues to take Speaker McCarthy's lunch money in every negotiation. Yeah. I just want to flag for everybody something I've noticed, which is the two best responses to the Biden age question have now come from Donald Trump and Matt Gates. That's like traveling to a small town in Italy, having the best pasta of your life, and finding out the chef is from Indiana and racist. <laughs> On Tuesday, the House voted to oust McCarthy from the speakership, with Democrats declining to save the speaker from this Republican chaos. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy, not here for a good time or a long time. <laughs> In the aftermath of the vote, one Republican could reportedly be heard saying, now what? <laughs> now what should be the fucking motto of the Republican Party? <laughs> we ousted the speaker. Now what? Trump won. Now what? We convinced a third of the country that Democrats were pedophiles so that we could cut taxes. Now what? <laughs> fucking now what? Now what, assholes, anyway? Meanwhile, New York Representative Jamal Bowman is under investigation after surveillance footage caught him pulling a fire alarm as he raced to vote on the House floor. Bowman's team said it was a mistake and that the representative was trying to open the door when he activated the alarm. Okay. Just say it like it's true forever. The only thing you can do now is just forever say that. That's the deal we've now made. Fine. I'm in. I've got you. It was an accident. Forever. But then, before he was ejected from the speakership, Kevin McCarthy called for Bowman to be punished, even comparing the incident to January 6th. And this is just like 9-11, said McCarthy after his flight was delayed. <laughs> During a performance at Madison Square Garden on Sunday, Stevie Nicks announced that Mattel will be creating an official Stevie Nicks Barbie. The perfect gift for baby boomers who play with dolls and children who love Stevie Nicks. <laughs> Who's that fucking Barbie for? <laughs> nah, it's good. It's good. Nick told the crowd that when Mattel approached her, she said, I was overwhelmed. Will she be like me? Will she have my spirit? Will she have my heart? No. 
said Mattel. It will be a lifeless doll. For now. Paris is battling a major bedbug infestation just 10 months before the city hosts the 2024 Summer Olympics. Think of it. They're all over there hopping from bed to bed without a moment's hesitation. And on top of that, bed bugs. <laughs> Dwayne Davis was arrested Friday in Las Vegas and charged with Tupac Shakur's 1996 murder. According to authorities, the man isn't believed to be the actual gunman, but rather the leader of a group of four men alleged to be responsible. Duh, said the FBI while looking at their receipts for a cashier's check made out to Dwayne Davis. <laughs> and finally, an elderly woman took her shot at the world record last weekend, seeking to become the oldest person in history to skydive. The jump ended in tragedy when her chute failed to open. Rest in power, Senator Dianne Feinstein.